Right now, I'm going to show you the very best way to blur the background in a photograph and avoid common pitfalls. Now, the reason you want to blur the background is because you've got an existing photograph and you want to create more separation between foreground and background. Let's get started. Let's realistically blur this background in three easy steps. Step number one, we need to isolate the subject. So what we want to do is go to the toolbar and you'll see there's three tools here. I like to call these the magic tools. It doesn't matter which one of these you have selected, it's going to enable select subject. But before you click on select subject, hit the little arrow and make sure you choose cloud. This is going to give a much better selection. Choose select subject and Photoshop's AI is going to make a selection. It's pretty good, but it looks like it missed a little bit around the eyeglasses. So go back up to the tools, choose the quick selection tool. If you hold down the shift key, it will add to the selection. You'll see a little plus in the middle and we can just pick up that area that got missed. Control command zero, we'll zoom back out. Great. Let's copy the selection to a new layer. Control J or command J will copy that. All right, that's the first step. The second step, we want to apply the blur. Don't make this beginner's mistake that a lot of people make with the blurs. You'll see it everywhere. Check this out. If I choose filter blur. All right, so I've applied the blur, but look at this halo around the edge. Look around the edge of your book, around the edge of her head. There's this doubling. Look at this on her arms. So why does that happen? Here's our silhouette. All right, so you can see them much more clearly this way. What happens is when you blur that background, it grabs those edge pixels and it pushes them out and then that creates the doubling. Fortunately, this is really easy to avoid and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. And by the way, if you're getting any value out of this, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications and you won't miss any of my tutorials. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide the isolated layer. We're going to go to the background. All right, so let's load this selection we already created. What we'll do is just hold down the Alt or the Option key. And then when you roll over the cutout layer, even though it's not active, you'll see a little square and we can click and that will load that selection. We're working on the bottom layer, but we loaded the selection from the cutout layer. Now here's what's really important. What we want to do is we want to expand the selection. So we're going to choose select, which has everything to do with selections. We want to modify the selection. What do we want to do? We want to expand. Why don't we expand by eight pixels and choose OK. Notice now that selection has now gone beyond those edges. So now we're inside the background colors. And all we need to do now is just fill this. Shift delete. We'll bring up the fill dialog box. Under contents, you want to use content aware. And then click OK. Content aware will use the pixels around the selection to fill in the selection. And that's looking pretty good. I'm going to hit Control or Command D to turn off the selection. Now, this is not perfect, but look at the edges. The contrast in those edges is gone, and that's going to work beautifully for what we want. All right, let's go back to our layer, turn it back on. Now we're still selecting the background. It's time to apply our blur. Choose filter. Now don't go to the blur as you would think. We actually want to go to the blur gallery and we're going to use field blur. All right, so here we are and you'll see a pin here. Why don't we increase the amount of blur? Now you'll notice it looks very artificial at the bottom. This is why we're using field blur. It's the ideal tool for this because we can create a blur that we can gradiate off. So what we want to do is go directly underneath here and create a second pin. So let's just click. Now what happens is this is going to create a transition between the two pins. Now we don't want any blur on the bottom pin. We could drag the blur slider to zero. Or here's a faster way. Hold down Command key or Control key on Windows. Double click on the pin and that will set that to zero. All right. Notice now we're getting a better blend here. 
Now let's go to the top pin. If we select the top pin, notice the blur is set to 74. I can drag on the blur or I can just grab on this little wheel and I can adjust the amount of blur. So let's just dial in the amount of blur that we want. Maybe about there. Now if we bring these closer together, notice that this blur will happen very abruptly. If we pull it further away, we can have a more gradual blur. So what you're looking for is something that's going to be realistic. And about there is where it starts to blur. And I think we've got a more realistic looking result. Now let's just move over to the side here and we can adjust how much blur we want. That's a nice amount of background blur. Notice the edges around here. No halos, all looking nice. Click OK. And now we have a beautiful background blur in a more realistic way. Hopefully you learned something new in this video. If you did, drop a comment underneath. And if you want to have five tips for creating better selections inside of Photoshop, check out my other video right here. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.